Ohio State and Northwestern meeting tonight here at the Value City Arena. Ohio State 20 and 6 on the year, 7 and 6 in the Big Ten, hosting 12 and 14 Northwestern. Northwestern has three capable players that can put points on the board, starting with Crawford. Cannot allow him to have a big night. Taken away by Northwestern straight down. Down the left side, Damps into the lane, pulls up. Crawford against Smith, pushes it foul line. Crawford turns, shoots it left to the foul line. Crawford. So far, this Temple is favoring Northwestern. Northwestern shooting 58%. Ohio State, 35%. Misses, rebound grab by Demps, Northwestern. Demps foul line down the lane, shoots low on the left. 25-16, Northwestern. When they continue to just really get anything they want on the offensive end. The Buckeyes have been behind for quite some time here. Kraft drives into the lane, goes to the hoop low on the left, banks it in, as it goes. Smith dribbles, drives low on the right, shoots, got it. Ohio State with the ball. Kraft right at the foul line, right point to Smith, top of the key to Ross, throws a long three, right it down. Smith down the lane, shoots low on the left, got it. Go to the basket, Paul Kills. Up court, Thompson in the air. Lobs it now for Smith, who dunks it up to the rim. This is a game that Northwestern had a nine-point lead in the first half. But Ohio State is seemingly taking control of it. Thompson shoots a fadeaway, got it. 46-33, Ohio State. And we got a little bit of a fight that's broken out. Amir Williams and Nicola Chirena. Now and LaQuentin Ross shoved Chirena from behind. And now we've got people coming off the benches to separate folks. There's no place for that. All right, so LaQuentin Ross has been ejected. Nicola Chirena ejected. The Buckeyes about to wrap up win number 21. State defeats Northwestern 76 to 60. Northwestern's a physical team, a tough basketball team. You know, that's just their style of play. It was about us matching their intensity, and uh, it took us a little while to do it, but once we got there, we did a good job of it. We had two very good practices leading into this game tonight. That was a, a good feeling, you know, leaving the gym yesterday that, that they were, uh, had that way about them. And, and you hope that's something that we can continue to build on because they understand, hey, when we practice well, we play well. Steve Reed, an excellent free throw shooter, will have the honor of shooting the technicals. Look at here, look at here. Bobby Knight just threw his chair. I just remember when he threw that chair, I was just shocked. Did I really see a chair go flying across the floor? And then when he got thrown out, I just remember it being so loud. It was like a piercing loudness that I'd never heard before. And Bob Knight is gone. And I remember saying to myself, even though I didn't play, I said, I was praying, Lord, please don't put me in this game because <laughs> I'm no good. I'm no good right now because my mind was just messed up on how loud it was because I couldn't even think. You couldn't hear nothing. Purdue Boilermakers defeat the Indiana Hoosiers. So, of course, winning was, you know, just icing on the cake. Being Purdue fans, you're always hearing about your love for Purdue, but also, you know, going against Indiana. Because that's the way it is. That's the way the rivalry is. You, know, you root for Purdue and you root against Indiana. We're both from Indiana, we're both big time schools, and I think we both have, you know, a rich tradition and a success in basketball. Playing against them is just so much emotion riding into that. You gotta find a way to try to control it because everyone's pumped up. Everyone. You can't get emotionally drunk. You have to understand what you're supposed to do and then still play at a high level. But I think Kendall, just you know, being around his dad, probably grew up understanding the rivalry. He did give me advice. When you start playing, you know, you just have to find an even keel to perform at your best. 
This is the only meeting between these two teams, regular season anyway, so you only get one crack at your rival. When it's only one time, it's different. You know, this is the only chance of winning this game, of winning this rivalry. And I think, you know, just a little bit more is on the line. Kendall's grandma and my mother will be there, uncles and cousins, so there's a lot of us. I'm coaching at 6 o'clock at Batavia, but before I take off to go to Batavia, I'll be sitting in my living room watching at least half the game. It's definitely going to be packed. It's going to be loud. Everyone's going to be excited for us to get this win.